present paper addressing the audience Paul Samuelson, Radical Economics and Textbook Making, uh, which is published by the Journal of History of Economic Thought, was intended as a contribution to um, two different issues. The first contribution uh, is to the study of Paul Samuelson's intellectual life and work, and the second contribution is to the history of economics textbooks in general. Uh, my claim is that these two issues are uh, closely related uh, in the case of Samuelson, that making the textbook played a central role in his academic life, and that writing it was a way for him to be uh, relevant on topical issues and to, uh, to deal uh, with um, social and policy problems. I already dealt with, uh, with this in a previous paper, uh, which I published a few years ago in History of Political Economy. And in that paper, I studied the making of the first edition of the textbook in the late 1940s. At this time, Samuelson was under attack from conservatives who were claiming that Paul Samuelson was a sort of communist. And Paul Samuelson's defense against these conservatives was to argue that his position was a middle-of-the-road position. This middle-of-the-road position for Samuelson means two things. First, it is a reasonable position between extremes. And second, it is the position of the expert, the mainstream economists. And Paul Samuelson um, strongly believes that a true scientific position should be reasonable in some way, that it should always ponder arguments that are made by uh, ideological extremes. The present paper deals with the way Paul Samuelson tried to maintain this middle-of-the-road position against a new generation of critics uh, in the late 1960s and early uh, 1970s. Uh, this new generation of critics um, uh, was made of younger people. Uh, some of them were graduate students, and these people were radicals. The argument was that Paul Samuelson's textbook was irrelevant and that the mainstream economics it advocated was unable to deal with environmental issues, questions of racial and gender discrimination, and more generally, um, questions of uh, power struggles. Paul Samuelson, helped by his team at uh, McGraw-Hill, tried to counter this argument, um, not really by changing the methodological content of the textbook, but by trying to apply basic economic principles um, to those questions. So they began to expand the scope of the textbook by adding um, chapters or passages about the environment, about uh, uh, urban segregation, uh, racial discrimination, and, and so on. So that's basically uh, the story uh, I tell in this paper. For me, there are... Um, two takeaway lessons that we can draw from, from this story. Um, the first uh, lesson is that the Paul Samuelson I, I see here through the archives is a much more constrained Samuelson than I thought he was. I thought that Samuelson in the mid-1960s uh, as an established scholar was able to pursue any sort of interest he liked. But in fact, when it comes to the textbooks, it is very different because the textbook operates uh, in a very competitive uh, market and it is driven by, um, by market forces. And what we see in the archives is that Samuelson has to take into account a lot of, uh, of market reports in order to make his textbook not only a better textbook, but also a more competitive textbook. So I think that's one of the lessons. The other lesson 
for me is that um, the paper shows that textbooks should not be considered as mere repositories of past economics knowledge and that their role may be larger than that. And it is especially the case uh, for Samuelson because Samuelson um, was using the textbook not just as a way to teach economics principles, but as a way to ponder on social and, and economic issues. Not all textbooks are like this, but I think we have to, to change a bit our, our, our positions toward economics textbook, which uh, as historians of economics, we tend to study uh, only as a way to retrace the development of uh, economics knowledge at some point in time. And we have to take into account the larger contexts uh, in which uh, they are made. Mm -hmm.